Hi, I'm Lou, and I have a tankless water heater that I've been happy with, except for after about a year of use, it started getting an error code on here, error code 11, which means it's being starved for gas. So I called the factory, and Ream in this case, Richmond or Ream, and they said that because I was using flex tube, it was, it was indeed starving the, the unit for gas. So I went ahead and switched to a solid pipe, giving it more gas. I did that in my last video. Today, uh, the factory also recommended that I take this apart and clean the burner, and that's what I'm going to do today. I'll start by turning off the gas, the hot water, the cold water, and the electric. Next, we'll take off the front cover. Next, we'll remove the printed circuit board box and let it hang. Next, we'll remove the gas supply line clips. Next, we want to remove this clip across the back that holds these three gas pipes in. Now we want to pull the gas pipes out. Careful not to lose these little O-rings on the end of each pipe. Now we want to remove the igniter mounting plate. And now the door switch. And finally the rest of the screws on the cover plate. and pull off the burner cover. Note this has a gasket on the back and it will rip a little bit. Don't worry about it. Don't tear it off. We'll just put it back on as is. Next we want to pull out these black rubber grommets. They could be white in your unit. Way back in the back there are three screws that hold the burner in place. You want to remove those. As you can see, a magnetic tip screwdriver is really handy. Now we can pull the burner out slightly, but there are wires we'll need to disconnect either here on the burner unit or down in the printed circuit board. It doesn't matter either way, just so you can get the burner out. Before you do this, by the way, you might want to take a picture just to remind you where all those wires go. With all the wires disconnected, now we can pull the burner completely out. Pull it out slowly and carefully so you don't bend any of these little guys. With the burner unit out, now we want to re remove the fuel rails on both sides. There's two screws. 
And there come the fuel rails right off. Next we want to clean out these fuel rails by blowing into them with compressed air. And also using a little wire to kind of clean around in there if we can get any debris out. On the right side of the burner in front here, remove this little plate. and that little brass ring as well. Inspect the whole unit for damage. Mine doesn't seem to have any. Then take a piece of fine sandpaper, 100 grit or larger, this is 400 grit, and clean these flame igniter rods. There's five of them here. There's one, two, three, four, five. Need to try to get around and sand those down just a little bit. Be careful not to damage the base and or bend the wires. Use compressed air and blow back down through all these burner ribbons. If you don't have an air compressor you can buy canned air at the hardware store. One screw here, and then on the top there's a screw here, one more screw right in there. Next do we have to remove this ODS. To do that, flip it over, red and white wires have a grommet on them, kind of push that through and pull it all the way out. Take one screw off the bottom here, and then we can pull this ODS out. Now to disassemble and clean the ODS, we take this screw out. Sometimes that can be very tight. Also that's a stainless steel screw so it won't stick to magnets, easy to lose, make sure you don't. Pull this off gently, straight up. Don't don't tip this sideways because you don't want to lose this guy here. This ceramic piece needs to be cleaned with compressed air. Now take this brass ring out. We're going to clean the rest of this with compressed air. There's no user serviceable parts in here. Don't disassemble anything else. Now we just want to carefully put the whole thing back together.